Hey guys, welcome out to Cooking with Jared. Today I have a special recipe for you. This is called Nacho Americacho. Now, I know that sounds funny, but this is a recipe that I kind of just made up on my own after going to uh, UNLV and some other cooking schools growing up. Uh, I just kind of put things together and made things that were simple as a college student. So here we go. This is Nacho Americacho. So what we're gonna do is take some corn tortillas right here and we're gonna put them on the sheet here and we're gonna just cut them in to quarters like this. And what I've done here is I've got some basic uh, corn oil here and I just pour it in there. I put mm, probably about three or four cups of oil right in this pan here. And all I do is I take these and put them in and I have this on full blast high and you're gonna let these things just golden brown. So leave them like that. And when they're done, we're gonna put them here in this pan. All right, so what we're gonna do is, this is really simple. You can use fresh chicken or you can use canned chicken. I actually use, I, I prefer using canned chicken because it's really fast. And so I just use breasted chicken like this. Um, it's any meat you want, you can use, but this is real simple. So I pour in about yeah, three tablespoons of oil there, kick my, uh, pan on here and I'm going to put it on full blast right there and we just basically put in our chicken like that. I'm going to do three cans of chicken for these nachos and right there. So we're going to let those fry up really, really hot. So I love onions so I'm going to cut some onions up here. It's real simple. You just cut them up, dice them up whatever size you like. I like to do it like this just like that. I'm gonna put all of our vegetables that we had in our fridge in, in here. So we got our onions right there. These were left over from some sandwiches that we had yesterday. Throw those onions in there. Now, use all the vegetables you like. I love mushrooms. So these nachos are gonna have mushrooms in them. So just slice your mushrooms up right here. All right, so I just happen to have some cauliflower. I'm a big cauliflower fan. So, I usually just uh, bust my cauliflower up like that. And uh, you can break cauliflower like this if you want, little small pieces, put them in there. How many ever pieces you want like that. And I never like throwing away any good vegetables, so I'll cut those little cauliflower pieces up like that. Throw them in there. You can also do this just to get the pieces in there like that. Okay, so looking at the chips here, they're starting to be golden brown now. They're starting, they look, you can hear how they've hardened up in here. So it's about time to take these out. So I, I use a spatula or sometimes you can use tongs and you wanna put them in here. Put a couple pieces of uh, paper towels because you want the oil to soak off of that. And this is the best part of the nachos is is actually the nachos. So we'll put those in there like that and I'll let those kind of soak up the oil like that. Okay, so we've got the chips here. So what you want to do now is throw in your salt. You want to salt those chips up a little bit, move them around a little bit like that. And then boom, you are ready to start cooking some more chips right there. So we'll throw those back in and while you're doing it. So once you get them in there, you want to Push them around. Make sure this oil is as hot as you can get. So we'll let those cook up a little bit. Okay, and on our chicken right here, so we got three things going on here. We got our vegetables, we got our chips frying, and I've got my chicken going. So there's a lot of things going on. So you take your chicken like this and just bust it up. And it can kind of be almost as shredded like chicken, but you want this on full blast and let that oil soak in there. And I like to throw in a little bit of salt, like this. And a little bit of pepper. Sometimes if it don't come out fast enough, you wanna do that. Some pepper in there to taste. And 
one of my little ingredients I like to put in here is a little bit of Worcester sauce, like that. Probably about a tablespoon or so. Mix that up in there. Like that. And, and then we've got some cumin here. So I like to sprinkle a little bit of cumin on top of there. Not too much, but enough where you get that Mexican flavor. Now you can, uh, if you were here, you could smell the cumin is really coming out in the chicken here. So we're gonna be putting this on top of our nachos once we're done here. If you look here, I kind of cooked it enough where it kind of burnt just a little bit. You can see the little bit of burn marks here. Um, now, one thing I like to add, if you like a little bit of a kind of a sweet taste, I'll add just a little bit of barbecue sauce here. Not a whole lot, just probably about that much. And that's probably about a tablespoon. And you mix that up and it gives it just a little bit of a nice little flavor to it. And it also caramelizes the chicken just a hair. Believe it or not, you can caramelize your chicken. And right there. And you can also do this with pork as well. So you cook your pork, throw in a little bit of barbecue sauce. Okay, so it's just looking really good. So we're done with our chicken. We're gonna put this off to the side. So now we've got our vegetables that are sitting right here. I just threw whatever I had in the fridge into here. So I'm gonna use a little bit of oil and you wanna make sure you get your vegetables full on as high as possible. Because vegetables, the faster they cook and the hotter they are, the more they'll keep in that moisture and they'll sear and caramelize on the outside. So, so I just take a little bit of oil. You can take your oil right out of your corn chips that you're frying. And you can go ahead and pour probably about three tablespoons of oil in there, like that. And we'll let that just cook super hot. Okay, so we got our vegetables cooking right here. This is really important. You wanna add a little bit of pepper in there. And one thing I really like to do is I grab maybe a little taco or burrito seasoning mix. It, does, it can be anything as long as it has some, some uh, Mexican flavor. And I like to throw that in there like that because that will seal in the moisture in your vegetables once I start to saute this, right, like this. So, and it'll give it a really cool, nice caramelized look to it right there. So you can see how it's starting to look really good caramelizing. And also you can add a little bit of salt in there, just a tad bit of salt like that. You really want to cook these as fast as possible. And, and don't let these um, cook down where they're soggy. That's awful when you have soggy vegetables on your um, nacho americachos. And my last ingredients I like to add into my vegetables, I love corn, so I like to sprinkle in a little bit of corn in there. And we will, just a hair bit more of salt right there. And then we'll just let that kind of saute all together. Like that, right there. It's looking good. Let that cook for about 60 more seconds. Okay, so our veggies are looking good. They're caramelized. I've uh, got some good flavor in there. We're gonna put those off to the side next to our chicken. One thing I like to do is I kind of like sweet nachos. So I just grab a uh, pineapple. You can do cubes or you can just do the slices like this. And you just do that, flip it upside down and uh, just uh, cut it right like that. You can cut them in small pieces if you want. I'll probably do that, cut them like that. Sometimes your whole display falls over. All right, there we go. And we're gonna saute those really fast in this hot pan. So first I'm gonna turn this thing on and get it really, really, really hot. <clears throat> okay, as you can see here, we've got oil flopping up in the air. We're gonna throw our pineapple on here. This is just one of my favorite things on uh, nacho americachos. Get ready for this. Right there. And we're cooking this on full blast right there. So we're gonna let that caramelize as fast as it can. We're gonna have to add a little bit of salt and we're gonna have to add a little bit of burrito, taco, enchilada seasoning. It does not matter. 
I'm just gonna add a little bit of this right now so it soaks that moisture inside of the pineapple. And again, this needs to be on full, as high as possible as you can. And then I'm gonna just do this, a little saute in. Keep that right there and let that sear right there. Okay, if you could actually smell through the video, you would smell the deliciousness of this pineapple. Now look very closely, you can see it's caramelizing right there, sealing in the flavor. Super yummy, super tasty, and of course you want a kind of a, a salty, savory flavor as well in there, so add just a hair bit more salt. And these are almost done. I'm just gonna cook these for about 30 more seconds on full high heat, we'll be good. Yeah. That's good. So we're done here with our pineapples. We'll put these off to the side over here. Okay, if you like olives, I love olives, but you don't want a whole round olive on top of your nacho americacho. So the fastest way to, to dice these up, just take your knife like this and just go like this. And in just seconds, you won't even cut yourself or anything. You've got instantaneous chopped olives. Okay, one of the best things you can do when you're making nachos is actually grate your cheese rather than buying it already shredded. So grated cheese is unbelievable. You can see I got a million things going on back here, but I love this. It's just awesome having all these things going on. So when I have a few minutes uh, or seconds, I will come over and I'll just grate my cheese. So what we're gonna probably do, is we'll just grate it on the counter right here. And I like to do it um, kind of the bigger grated pieces, kind of like that, rather than the small ones. I don't like the small. So you just grade this up, and you probably want to grade off about a half a block of cheese if you're going to be feeding the whole family, maybe even more at times. So just grade that up. You can always have your kids grade the cheese too. I don't know where my kids are. Sequoia, <laughs> you want to come grade the cheese? Be my helper? Okay, here you go. You grade the cheese. So what we're going to do is we'll put the cheese in there and use to start grading it, okay? Okay, we're gonna make some fresh guacamole. This guacamole is so simple. Um, all you gotta do is you only need basically three or four ingredients, whatever you want, but just bust open your uh, avocado like that, and oops, need a spoon. Get your spoon right here, just take your avocado, throw it in there. Now a little trick is to keep the pit, whoops, <laughs> keep the pit in there because that'll help keep preserve it if you don't eat it all when you are uh, after you're done. So we'll just cut the three of these avocados up like that. Just break it open like that. Reach in. Simply do this. That's all there is to it. So we got that now. I like to get rid of my mess right like that. What you do is once you have your avocados in here, you can just take some lime juice like this. This is the easiest way to do it. Throw a little bit of lime juice in there. Gotta love the lime when you're in Mexico. There, and you can also just cut off a lime like this. I generally will use the lime at the very end of the day and cut it in half and then do this. But I like to put that on top of my actual nacho americachos. But we're gonna use some garlic salt right here. And you're gonna have to do this to taste. But garlic salt is the key for guacamole. And of course, you gotta have some pepper in there for some spice, like that. And let's mix this up real quick. You can use a mixer, you can use a spoon, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't take long as long as you have um, some ripe avocados. And just do this real quick. Nothing to it. And then just push it down and mix this stuff up. I actually like my guacamole, um, a little bit chunky, so I won't mix it completely up where it's super smooth. I'll kind of leave some chunks in there like this. So, and we're gonna leave that pit in there too, just in case we don't eat all this guacamole tonight, we'll, uh, we'll have that pit preserving this. All right, see that right there? Okay, there's one last thing we have to do right here. And we're gonna throw a fresh tomato in there. So everyone loves tomatoes, right? When you're making Mexican food. So I like to do this, cut these up a bit. 
and get them as small or as big as you want. I think that's pretty good. We'll throw those in there like that. We'll just use a half of one. We don't want to overpower it with tomatoes, but. And there you have an incredible, simple, fast guacamole right there. Okay, and one thing you want to do, once you're about done with your tortillas, your corn tortillas, frying those chips up, just come over and turn your oven on, and we're going to put it in, uh, you can do 375, 400. I like to cook it fast. We'll do uh, 375 today and just turn that pup on. That'll heat up while you're finishing everything up. Okay, now it is time to assemble the nacho americacho. So we're gonna take our fresh made corn chips right here. So we're just gonna build a layer at the bottom like this. One nice little bottom layer. And what I like to do is I actually like to throw in a little bit of cheese right out of the gate, right in this bottom layer like this. And then we're going to grab our chicken. So it's, it's a real simple process. We just go in and sprinkle in all your favorites as much as you like. So I like to throw the chicken in on this layer. Okay. Then we'll throw in another layer of chips here. A little bit there. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna go with some vegetables. Now again, if you don't like vegetables, then don't, just don't make the vegetable part of it. But, but we like veggies, so we're gonna throw them in there. We're gonna throw some more cheese in there. Now I like to put a lot of cheese at this layer because you want this to melt and to goo down into the bottom nachos there, right through your veggies and so forth. There we go. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit more chicken right now. Right there. Now this will feed like your whole family, by the way. So spread that out like that. I'm gonna throw in the rest of our chips here. Sometimes you'll have extra chips and that's fine. I like to use as many chips as I can here. And if you have extra chips, the great thing about these is you just put them in a Ziploc bag and you can eat them for the next week. So we're gonna throw in our top layer of cheese right here, right there. All right, big mound here. And of course, the delicious topping it off here with our pineapple, which gives it a really, really yummy, tangy, delumptious taste. All right, one last little piece there. There we go, right there. Oh, and you can't forget our crushed olives here. If you like olives, throw your olives in on that. Again, this is probably about a $50 nacho plate if you go to a restaurant. So, all right, so, whoop, lost a little bit there. So there you go, right there. Now we're just gonna put this in the oven. Right here, this thing weighs about probably five pounds. So here we go. And we'll pop it in right there, right up to the tip top. And we're gonna let that just bake for probably maybe 10 minutes or so. After nacho americachos, you're gonna want a delicious dessert. So while you already have your hot oil cooking, just keep it on your stove. You'll pull your nacho americachos out of the oven, you know, you're eating those. And off to the side, you take a flour tortilla and you put it in your super hot grease like this. Okay, so I'm cooking this really hot. You're gonna watch it bubble up. So it's gonna get really, really hot. I'm gonna flip it over. And it cooks probably in just seconds here. So take it and flip it over like this. You can see the bubbles coming out. We are just about done here. And you can see that, whoop. See that that's browning up right there. Let the grease come out of it, a little oil. Throw it right on here. Then take a little bit of honey like this. Reach down in here and just spread out your honey right on top here. Now it's too bad that you're just watching this on a, a camera or TV right now. You're not gonna be able to taste this, but people flip out when they taste this. It's amazing. So we got that. And then of course, take some powdered sugar right here. 
and just sprinkle it on top. Now, this is the poor man's sopapilla, but it works and tastes so good. So it's really simple. And there you go, you can eat like 10 of these and just not stop. It's just like you can't eat just one. So there you go, poor man's sopapilla. One thing I forgot to mention here is the powdered sugar. You can use store-bought powdered sugar, but actually we like to use homemade powdered sugar. People kind of wonder, how do you make that? It was really easy. You just take a bunch of sugar, and you take your uh, Vitamix and you pour it in like that. Put that on top and put that little puppy there and get ready because here we go. And voila. You've got powdered sugar right there, and it's so yummy. Fresh, yummy powdered sugar. There you go. So if you want to impress your friends um, with really cool napkin display, just take your napkins like this and just roll your arm around in circles like that. And take the top one off because it's got your arm grease, and voila, there you go. 10 minutes is up. So, here we go, right there. Make your whole family happy with nacho maricacho. There you go. All right, there you go. Thanks for coming out this evening and watching this video on how to make your own homemade nacho americachos. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to having you on a future recipe uh, with Cooking with Jared. So thanks for coming along and enjoy.